Coming up on Transworld Sports, we head to France for a festival of action sports. Still in France, we're at the latest event of the BMX Supercross World Cup. Australian golfer Mark Leishman tells us how his charity foundation is saving lives. And the Rallycross World Championship Series is clicking into gear. We're in Sweden for round six. The French city of Montpellier was the location for the second stop of the FIS World Series. FIS is the biggest annual tour for action sports. It encompasses three continents and features the world's best tricksters in a variety of events. FIS Montpellier is the longest running meet on the calendar and is now in its 23rd year. Up next, we got skateboard finals. In the Skateboard Street Pro Final, 12 riders took part. They each had two 60-second runs in which to display their skills, and it was their best run which counted. Switzerland's Simon Stricker didn't perform at his best in the semis, and he was determined to make amends in the final. He started off strongly and got more confident as he went on. The Swiss rider finished the day in third with 81.50 points. Great Britain's George Poole was up next. The 22-year-old hails from Watford but lives here in France. An accomplished but limited performance saw him finish in 10th position. Japan's Kayaki Ike is 18 years old and he is one of the rising stars of the sport. He finished second at the previous FIS event in Hiroshima and once again his laid-back, effortless style endeared him to the crowds. 82.25 gave him another second place. Next to perform was South Africa's Brandon Valhalla. The atmosphere is good, the skate park's good. The first concrete skate park that FISA built, so the concrete you definitely get way better pop than the wood. And the obstacles are really cool. It's basically the same thing, just concrete, and I like riding concrete because that's all we got in South Africa, so I guess it feels more like home to me. A score of 79.25 secured sixth place for Valhalla. Richard Turi of Slovakia was last year's overall feast champion in this event, but he's looked a little rusty so far this season. He finished ninth in Hiroshima, but fared slightly better here in Montpellier, taking fifth place. Yet it doesn't look like he will be retaining his title this time around. Japan's Ryo Sagawa won the opening FIS event in Hiroshima, and the 19-year-old was a big favourite to win here. The highlight of his run was a huge 360 flip across the gap, but he could only manage fourth place. At the age of 31, Gosho Johnson is a relative veteran of the sport, and he was the oldest man in the field. The American upstaged his younger rivals with a superb performance which secured first place. His clean and fast run was rounded off by a five metre long transfer to rail which the crowd and judges all loved. This crowd was crazy, you know, if you look at one side, thousands of people, you look to the other side, thousands of people, hype, screaming the whole time, you know, it just, it raised the level of skating so much. Coming away with the win is just amazing, you know, super stoked about it. A 
Up next, we've got a roller final, so look at the crowd. The 12 riders in the final of the Roller Freestyle Park had two runs of 50 seconds each. Six French riders had made it through to the competition. The park is a lot more compact compared to what we are used to. The obstacles are close, so it's harder to link lines together, but it will make it interesting. Nicolas Servi adapted well to the roller park and he displayed his usual bag of tricks. A big double backflip helped him to claim sixth place in front of a huge crowd, no doubt drawn by the number of French riders in the field. Yoon Jae Jong Yoon of South Korea was next. He's only 14 and was the youngest rider in the final. With so much flow and ease, he put together a stylish run on his European debut and secured fifth. Frenchman Romana Brat has an all-or-nothing approach which the fans love. The 31-year-old went for the flip right out of the gate and it set the tone for an exciting run which gave him third place. Yuma Badwan hails from Gap in southeast France. The highlight of his performance was a huge 1260, which he landed with ease. The 21-year-old looked comfortable throughout his run, and a score of 87.50 saw him take second place. Jeremy Malik was outstanding in the qualifying competition, and the Frenchman took his great form into the final. He was so quick around the park and nailed a massive 1260. The 26 year old, who recently celebrated the birth of his first child, moved into first place with one rider left to go. Last man up was the 2018 overall feast champion, Joe Atkinson. The Englishman looked as technically accomplished as usual, but the French judges were tough on their scoring with him. They decided that his run was only good enough for fourth place, with the day belonging to home favourite, Jeremy Millie. I'm so excited about this. Uh, I just win the Fils Montpellier. It's the first time for me. I don't know how to say more, but I'm very, very happy about this. Under the floodlights, the final of the BMX Freestyle Spine Ramp took place. This is the best event I've ever been to. Like, the crowd is completely electric. It's, it's just unreal. It's, you can't put it into words, really. Once you're here and you're in this atmosphere, in this environment, you're like, wow, this is some show, you know? I've been doing BMX for my whole damn life, and so many tricks, I get goosebumps in my, in my arm, where it's just like, this is next level stuff. The energy here is unmatched, and, and that's something that you have to come to experience it. Even though the contest looks crazy on TV, you have to come here to experience the energy. Uh, the only way I can describe it is it's the most intense thing you've ever seen. Russia's Konstantin Andreev is always a crowd favorite here because of his supreme technical ability. Anybody wanting to get into this sport need only take a look at the way this man rides to see how to do things properly. Eighty-six points meant that the Russian finished in sixth place.
America's Dennis Anarsson is considered to be one of the best all-around BMX riders ever. The 28-year-old has won 10 X Games medals and he can adapt effortlessly to any street, park or dirt course. But on this occasion, a slip cost him vital points and he would finish the event in fifth. Seventeen-year-old Kieran Riley from England is an emerging star of the BMX world. He set the tone for his run by opening up with a sensational 360 double tail whip. The little guy from Newcastle has an amazing ability to get huge air on his tricks, and he did that time after time here. Judges were impressed and a score of 87 meant fourth place. Justin Dowell was up next. The 19-year-old American has already perfected some of the most difficult BMX tricks and his next aim is to execute them consistently in competition. He worked the transitions well, and a 60 double bar spin followed by an alley-oop turn down flare were the highlights of his routine. He ended things off with a Twix, which is a tail whip and a bar spin all in one big air. Dal made the podium, coming home in third. Thirty-four-year-old Mark Webb of Great Britain has performed at many editions of Fils Montpellier and he has a great bond with the crowd here. Webb produced another astonishing show with trick after trick. He secured second place. Coming out on top was Argentinian rider Jose Gil Torres. The 24-year-old opened with a massive height of around 15 feet before blasting into a double tail whip. He then went higher and higher with each air and nailed every single trick. He pulled off an incredible fakie into a clean tail whip that sent the crowd crazy. Torres won with a huge score of 93.33. Super happy, super excited. He had a rough injury last year that took him out the whole year. He's happy to be back here. He says the crowd's insane. He's got just super, super motivated the whole time. Just felt awesome. And we'll bring you more incredible gravity-defying action from Fils Montpellier later in the show. We look at some legends of the action sports world now in our top five. First up is Emily Copeland Durham. Dubbed the first lady of wakeboarding, she won all of the sport's major tournaments in 2002. The Colorado native was also the first female rider to perform off-axis spins. It's a 
Sebastian Foucan was a pioneer of the sport of free running, which fuses elements of acrobatics, gymnastics and climbing. The 45-year-old Frenchman remains committed to his art and its philosophy of unifying the mind and body with any environment. Missy Giovi was one of mountain bike racing's first female stars. She was noted for wearing a dead piranha on a necklace when racing and for having the ashes of her dead dog as a constant companion when away from the track. Sean White is the X Games' most successful athlete and a three-time Olympic champion. Although a hugely impressive skateboarder, it's in the snowboarding arena where the flying tomato has truly excelled over the years. And finally, the Birdman, Tony Hawk, regarded as one of the best skateboarders ever. By the time he retired at 31, he'd won all the sport had to offer. Now 51, he runs his own media ventures and charities and still skates, appearing in demos and exhibitions all over the world. For the latest stop of the UCI's BMX Supercross World Cup, the riders headed to France. Some 20 kilometers south of the French capital Paris, close to the Palace of Versailles, lies the town of Saint-Quentin on Yvelines. And it was here where round six of the World Cup series took place. The track's great. Um, the French are known, you know, for having good tracks. Uh, they always have been. The track is super fast. It's, it's very fun to ride because it's very technique. The track's a bit different here in Paris from, from it was last year. They changed the third straight quite a bit and um, big jumps and big triples. Definitely a lot of different lines. I think there's three or four different lines and depending on weather and what's going to go on, it's going to change up through the day. The track's looking really good. The surf's a little bit diff different, a little bit loose, but the turns are really fast and, and nice. Yeah, this track, I've never been to this track before. Um, so far I'm liking it. It's, uh, it's definitely a technical but fast track and also a power track. So it's um, so far so good and I really like it. In the women's elite final, the favourite was last year's overall champion, Laura Smulders. The 25-year-old Dutch rider went into the race having won the last two World Cup events. Smulders' closest challenger here was expected to be America's Elise Willoughby, but France's Malon Valentino had other ideas. Roared on by her home crowd, the French woman made a great start and she battled it out for the lead with Willoughby. Smulders was back in third, chasing hard. In the home straight, 28-year-old Manon held on to take victory ahead of Smulders, with Willoughby in third. It was a shock result and one which represented the biggest success of Manon's career to date. It was hard, she was coming back again and again and again. And last corner, I really didn't believe it. I thought we were going to crash or something like this. And I don't know, it just happened. And the crown was like, yeah, 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 France, France. It was amazing. I, I had no more legs, but I just like tried again and again. I'm sorry, I just, nothing else says that. It's amazing to win here, really. In the men's elite final, Niek Kiman of the Netherlands was the man to beat. The 23-year-old went into the race looking to make it four wins in a row. Last year's overall champion is already running away with this year's competition and once again he was in brilliant form here. Kiman produced another majestic display of riding from the front. France's Joris Dordé did his best to get close, but there was just no stopping the Dutchman, and he secured a comfortable victory which extended his lead in the series.
insane. I won Papenal twice. And you know, being a Dutchie, that's the one you want to win. But um, yeah, personally, looking at performance, this was probably yeah, even better than that. Australian golfer Mark Leishman is a four-time winner on the PGA Tour and a member of multiple President's Cup teams. The 35-year-old has established himself as one of the best players in the world. Mark and his wife Audrey have a young family and they've established a charity foundation called Begin Again. Every year the foundation hosts a gala dinner charity auction and a golf day. The money raised is for a cause that's very close to the couple's hearts. This is a huge weekend um, for our family. Uh, you know, four years ago, Audrey got very sick with sepsis, toxic shock syndrome and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, we got told that she wasn't going to make it. She ended up surviving and um, a lot of good has come out of it. So we started the Begin Again Foundation. I always say that the foundation is my fourth baby, so I'm about as proud as you can be of a kid. Um, in four years, we've grown from, well, our first year we were raised 150,000, last year was 340,000. Over the years, it's really become about telling other people's stories as well as mine, because while my story is why, why we're here right now, it's not why we're continuing to do what we're doing. Audrey's near-death experience made plenty of headlines back in April 2015. But what's not so well known is the battle that she faced after surviving such a harrowing medical emergency. I always tell the story about when I was being discharged and the nurse comes in and She's the coordinator and she's telling me I'm going to be discharged with a bedside commode, a walker, I had a pick line in, I needed home health care, antibiotics every eight hours. And she goes over the cost of every single one of those things and she says, is that okay? And I thought to myself, well, what if it wasn't? I don't really have a choice. Um, and so I thought when we were coming up with the idea of the foundation and who we were going to support and how we were going to support them, I wanted to just do something to take just a little bit of stress off of them. It's hard enough to, to just try and get better when you don't have to worry about um, how you're going to pay for it or how you're going to pay your house off or how you're going to pay your rent or whatever it might be. Um, we were lucky, Audrey could just concentrate on getting better. Uh, some people aren't that lucky, so we want to just take the burden off their shoulders a little bit and try and give them, um, whether it's a little more hope or just a, a little bit of ease that, all right, we're not going to lose our house or we're not going to, you know, we're going to be warm this winter because we can't pay our heating bill. I suffered from signs of PTSD and I was in counselling for a full year after. Um, my immune system was completely shot and for the first year after I got sick, I was sick pretty much every other week. In addition to trying to financially help those going through the same ordeal as their family did, the Leishmans and Begin Again have another equally important mission in mind, to spread the word about this relatively unknown medical condition, which will hopefully then minimise the impact it will have in the future. Sepsis is um, it's a blood poisoning basically, um, you can get it from any infection, so cut on your finger, um, gets infected, your brain sends out a toxin to fight the infection, but with sepsis and toxic shock syndrome it sends out too much of that toxin, turns your blood toxic, basically shuts down your organs and um, kills you from the inside out. 270,000 Americans die every year from sepsis. That's one every two minutes. Um, more children die from sepsis than pediatric cancer. If you know the symptoms of it, it's very treatable quite quickly. You know, you can get on top of it quickly. It's, uh, you know, you don't even really get too sick, but um, if you don't treat it, for every hour that goes by, your chance of dying goes up by 8%. A big part of the problem with sepsis and toxic shock are that 
the symptoms mimic the flu. So that's why it's important to know if you have had another infection, if you've had strep throat or a UTI, pneumonia, kidney stones. Those are some of the most common um, causes of sepsis. But if you've never heard of it and you don't know that it can happen, it's hard to think that it, it would. The Begin Again Foundation runs three programs called the Leash Line, Butterfly Blessings and Period Planners. All distribute financial help and supplies to those who need them most. None of this would be possible without fundraising and a huge part of that success is thanks to the help of the PGA Tour family. And that to me is what's so inspiring is that Audrey has every right to just take care of herself, take care of her husband, take care of her three amazing children and just live her life. But instead she sacrifices so much of her time to make sure that other survivors are taken care of, that the families of those going through what they went through are taken care of. Um, so I think that's why their story is so amazing for us and why it's so important for so many of us to show up every single year on this day. Incredible story, really, but it's testament to the sort of people they are that a gathering like this gets together for them each year. You know, not only the pros and, and such a, you know, a really high-end list of pros, but the people in the community that get behind them and support. Never dreamt that I'd be able to have a platform to be able to give back to communities in which you live in and you have where the communities in which your friends and uh, fellow uh, pros live in. And, and you know what, to support this story and support Mark and Andre, it's, it's an easy, easy for me to do, easy for our family to do, and I uh, love being a part of it. Anytime you can uh, help out a mate, I guess, uh, you know, you'll put your hand up and, you know, it's, it's great fun for us. We get to meet three new guys and, you know, play a great golf course and, um, you know, all in for awareness for, for sepsis, so it's, it's, it's great. PGA Tour is such a family on the road, um, so their support has been amazing. And to know that everyone is taking time out of their life to support this is pretty amazing. I've got a great bunch of friends out there that, that want to come and support it. You know, the PGA Tour on their normal weeks raise a, a lot more money than we do, but we feel like this is just so good to have this, have the support of the guys, not only golfers, but all the sports people from around the area come and, you know, we can impact people around the Virginia Beach area and then, um, you know, our sepsis program is, um, is national, so um, the support is huge. This event would not happen and it wouldn't, wouldn't be as successful as it is without those guys that come and support it. This is Hernias in Sweden. The normally quiet town was the location for round six of this year's World Rallycross Championship. Swedish brothers Timmy and Kevin Hansen went into the event separated by just one point at the top of the overall standings. Timmy and Kevin are working with the team. They, they also know behind the scenes. They are not only drivers, so that means that they are more into the teamwork. So it's not only their own success, it's also the success for the team, which means that even if the brother is in front, it's quite okay because the team is succeeding. The brothers started in second and third place for the final race. Oh, it's an even start. Kronos got a great start. Going to go around the outside. Kevin Hansen trying to get up alongside Sebastian Eriksson. Eriksson's got the whole shot. Kronos inside, though. Going to go stand up surely. Oh, the back. Ends up running wide. Right. Sebastian Eriksson. Yeah, Timmy has it up the inside. And Kronos, Kronos being pushed wide. Has to cut Kronos. He's going to get a penalty for that for sure. Nittish is next to him, but he won't do anything to his teammate. Ambring down at the back of the pack. Oh, disaster for Kronos. Sebastian and Kevin up in front and will have already had that chance to pull a gap. I, I would be tempted to joke on right now. Sebastian Eriksson has 3.6 over Timmy. Timmy's got clear air in front. If anyone can close that gap down over the next few laps, it's Timmy Hansen. Would you go now? Would you dare to on lap two? You've run the risk of letting Kevin Hansen free, though, who's also got pace. There's nothing between Timmy and Kevin. So you've 
You've just got to try and wait it out and see what Timmy can do and then try and respond. Great analysis, Dan Rook, of course, who works as a spotter himself as well as having driven the supercar. Knows this game from all sides and he's got his spotter's head on there. Sebastian Eriksson will be desperate, desperate to get it done. The gap's up to 3.9. Timmy Hansen through the apex and now super smooth. Kenneth Timmy on the road is saying, keep it tidy, keep pushing. Yeah, he needs to keep it really tidy. We can see Kenneth there on the radio just saying, push, push, keep it calm, don't make any mistakes. And uh, we see Kevin there maybe running a little bit wide, but no, it's not too bad. He's got a good driver for corner. Gap's down to 3.7. It was up to 3.9 just a few moments ago. Sebastian Eriksson goes down the left. Sebastian Eriksson has to go now. He doesn't have any threat from Kevin behind, but he's got the gap at the moment, so he needs to capitalise on that and get in and out and get it done. Sebastian Eriksson there with a gap of 3.8. He's got to get these next couple of corners perfect, perfect. And then he needs the joker of his life if he's to come out in front of Timmy Hansen. One of the world championships best, and he drops it on the brakes. Kevin alongside. Send Sebastian now. Send him now. Timmy's got a puncher. Oh, Timmy's out. now, so rain us up into a podium position in runners after the roll in Q1. <laughs> it's unbelievable, you couldn't write it, so at the minute Kevin Hansen is down to gain the most. Andreas Eriksson, look, he looks so nervous, I've never seen him look so nervous. Sebastian Eriksson has one lap to go, Kevin Hansen is all over him, Dan, he's just got to keep it tight, he surely don't make a gap, but Kevin's trying to force one. Yeah, Sebastian just has to hit all of his breaking points and not make any mistakes, he's got to be super, super careful right now. It's a bit of a revenge from uh, 2014 when I was leading and the car broke. But I have to thank the whole team. They have been, done an impressive job over the whole winter to, to try to develop the car from last year. Now it works really well. We still have some few small problems that we need to sort, but we can see now that we're clearly on the pace, so it feels good for the future. Time now for Sporting Heroes. James Guy is a multiple Olympic, world and European medalist in the pool. The 23-year-old famously beat hot favourite Sun Yang to win the individual 200m freestyle gold medal at the 2015 World Championships. Since then, he's anchored the British 4x200 relay team to two world titles and Olympic silver. Now, with his focus on both the freestyle and butterfly disciplines, James will be hoping to put up a fight in the pool, much like his sporting hero did in the ring. Hi, I'm James Guy, and my sporting hero is Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather is one of the most successful boxers of all time. The 42-year-old held multiple world titles in five different weight classes, and he's often referred to as the greatest defensive fighter in history. The American retired from the sport in 2017, following a one-fight comeback with UFC star Conor McGregor. Mayweather finished his illustrious career with a record of 50 wins and no losses. My sporting hero is probably Floyd Mayweather, he's the boxer. He is a really cool dude. I mean, I watched his episodes of how he trains and he said it's all about hard work and dedication and he's right. I mean, he's never been beaten before. And the way he trains and the way he commits himself to the training and his house, he's got his cars he's got, I and mean, the way he looks after himself is all that recovery, training well, having that team around him that makes him the, what the man he is today. That's the most important thing I've got and that's why he's my hero.
We return to France now for more from Fils Montpellier. Up next, the Mixed UCI Women Final. The competition at Fils events amongst female BMX riders has improved year on year. In the final of the Freestyle Park, 12 riders took part. They each had two 60-second runs with the best score counting. Japan's Oke Minato is her nation's leading rider. She got some decent air on her tuck no-hander and rounded off her run with a tidy backflip, which helped her to secure the sixth spot. America's Chelsea Wolfe was up next. She rode well at the last feast event in Hiroshima, where she got fifth place. Here in Montpellier, the 26-year-old was equally consistent and once again claimed fifth. Like many of the riders on show here, Switzerland's Nikita Dukorau is hopeful of representing her nation at next year's Olympics in Tokyo. She nailed a one-foot X up to Can Can and then ended her routine with a huge 540, all good enough for fourth place. Nineteen-year-old German rider Lara Lessmann was the overall feast runner-up last year. Along with reigning champion Hannah Roberts, she has really helped raise the level of riding amongst the women. The teenager delighted the crowds in Montpellier with another typically controlled and stylish run. I learned bar ride right this weekend and I never wanted to learn them because I was always scared, but just tried and it went pretty good. So now it's fun and I did it. And also the bar spin to XF, I never did it before. And I just tried and it worked out, so I'm happy. Third place for Lara Lessman. With the Olympics fast approaching, every freestyle park event at FIS offers an opportunity for the riders to earn points towards qualification for the Games. Just nine women will make it to Tokyo, and the competition is fierce. America's Paris Benegas is expected to be in Tokyo, and she looked good here as she secured second place. It's such an amazing feeling when I bumped up to that first place spot. I was like super stoked, and then I was like, I know Hannah has to go. I'm just stoked, like just to be on that podium is just amazing. 17-year-old American sensation Hannah Roberts is the undisputed star of this sport. Barring injury, she'll be in Tokyo and will be a hot favourite for gold. The youngster never seems to lose and once again she tore it up at this feast event. The Michigan native was rewarded with a massive 93 points. I had to approach the riding it different, so once you find a line that you like, you kind of just stick to it and, it and it ends up working out and it gets a little bit better throughout the, throughout the week, so that's what happened and I'm going to be think, more thankful. Now to an event that the home fans were really looking forward to. Up next, you see IBMX Flatland Finals. BMX Flatland is performed on a smooth, flat surface and has been described as a form of artistic cycling mixed with elements of break dancing. Tricks are performed by spinning and balancing on the bike in a variety of unexpected positions. Eight riders qualified for the final and they had three minutes in which to showcase their skills. Takumi Isogai is one of a handful of talented Japanese riders who have emerged in recent years. He's still only 16 and has been hailed as the future of the sport. Crowds always love him because of the speed at which he performs. Along with his speed, Isogai is known for his disciplined approach. A score of 80.75 saw him finish the day in fourth place.
The next man to perform was Dominic Nicolni of the Czech Republic. The 33-year-old is one of the most precise riders on the circuit and when he's in the mood, he can beat anyone. In front of huge crowds in Montpellier, Dominic was certainly in the mood and he produced a flawless run that was a sheer joy to watch. Judges awarded him 90 points. It moved him into first place and he just had to wait and see if any of the three riders left would beat his score. <laughs> Alex Jumilin was next. At 41, he was the oldest rider in the final. The Frenchman is a legend of Flatland and he has competed in every edition of Fils Montpellier going back to 1997. He's won the competition on six occasions. However, his chances of victory number seven went with an unusually cautious approach which meant that he only finished in fifth position. Japan's Moto Sasaki took to the stage with the target of 90 points in his sights. The 34-year-old used the oval stage well to get plenty of speed into his tricks. However, he could only manage a score of 85.85, which moved him into third. The final rider was the man who many in the crowd had come to see, the reigning feast champion Matthias Dondois. The Frenchman is always at his best when he's having fun, but chasing the big score posted by Dominic Nicolny seemed to affect his flow somewhat. He nailed some great tricks, but the combinations just weren't up to his usual high standards. Dondois was awarded 87.07 points to finish second behind the man from Prague. The competition was probably the best flatland event ever seen in Montpellier. It's the craziest uh, BMX flatland final that we have ever witnessed. And uh, the crowd went crazy. I've never seen so many people enjoying flatland. Uh, Dominic Nicolni absolutely smashed it. Like, there's no way I was going to top that. So I just tried my best and did a little mistake at the end. But I was like, oh, it, was, it was too good today. Oh, it's like 10 times bigger the event, like uh, I can remember. So it was crazy for me. Yeah. The pressure is kind of huge, like because of the crazy crowd. Uh, you want to you wanna, uh, look good, I mean, like perform good. So uh, it's a big pressure, even like when you do a lot of competitions, you still want to show uh, the best you can do. The event which brought the curtain down on Feast Montpellier 2019 was the men's BMX Freestyle Park. 12 riders made it to the final and the competition was wide open. As with the women, each rider had two 60-second runs with the best one counting. French rider Anthony Jean-Jean was first up. A 
backflip double tail whip over the big spine was the climax of his routine and he finished the event in 11th place. America's Justin Dowell was next and he opened up with a big cannonball to bar spin. A 360 windshield wiper led into his signature Twix manoeuvre and the 19-year-old went into the lead with a score of 91.20. Dow's compatriot Nick Bruce followed and his early combinations were impressive. A 360 invert was the highlight of his routine and he came home in fourth. Twenty thousand fans lined the bank of the River Les to watch the action. Australia's Jake Woolwork looked slightly overawed at the size of the crowd, and his performance looked a little nervy too. He brought his usual array of flips and tricks, but he lacked some speed around the course, and the Aussie had to settle for sixth. Irek Rizaev is the leading Russian rider, and the 21-year-old opened with an unusual diagonal line. His route paid off and he got some huge air into his tricks. A 360 triple tail whip stunned the crowd and he was given a score of 90 points to move into second place. Rim Nakamura was another promising young Japanese rider here in Montpellier. He nailed bar spin after bar spin, throwing in a few tail whips into the mix before launching into a huge air. Fifth place for Nakamura. The last rider out was Logan Martin, and the Australian was determined to knock Justin Dowell off the top spot. The 25-year-old was feast champion in 2015 and 2016, but he then suffered a broken collarbone which curtailed his dominance. He's looking back to his best now, though, and the Queenslander nailed a brilliant run to claim third place behind Irak Riziev and the winner, Justin Dowell. This has always been a dream of mine, seriously. Like, Fees to me is the holy contest. Like, the best riders in the world come here and to put in so much training time that I did. I left home, moved to Europe to just to train and to come here and win this is just, it's mind blowing. Like, I'm, I'm so happy. The next Fees event takes place in China in October.